The Supreme Court is hearing a case today that could change the internet. You should also brace yourself for some wild weather this week. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Tuesday, February 21st. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. Number one, President Biden is in Poland today. He's there to mark the anniversary of Russia's invasion in Ukraine. He'll give a speech today ahead of the anniversary, which is on February 24th. This follows a surprise trip the president made to Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, yesterday. Biden is looking to strengthen support for Ukraine among U.S. allies ahead of spring. That's when Russia is expected to launch a major offensive. Meanwhile, in Russia, President Vladimir Putin delivered a key speech earlier this morning. In it, he blamed the West for making the conflict worse. Number two. Another powerful earthquake hit the Turkey-Syria border yesterday. This one was a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. It left at least three people dead and caused a lot of panic. The region was already devastated by quakes that killed over 46,000 people just two weeks ago. So why does this keep happening? Turkey sits on two major fault zones where earthquakes originate. The earthquakes on February 6th were the deadliest in the country's modern history. Number three, the Supreme Court is hearing a case today that could change the Internet. In Gonzalez versus Google, a family argues that tech companies should be legally accountable for harmful content promoted by their algorithms. In November of 2015, three ISIS gunmen opened fire at a restaurant in Paris. They killed 23-year-old college exchange student Nohimi Gonzalez. Her family says that Google's YouTube acted as a recruiting platform by recommending ISIS-related content. The landmark case could threaten Section 230. That's a decades-old law that has shielded tech giants from blame over posts, photos, and videos shared on their platforms. Number four, the number of fatal U.S. police shootings rose again last year. According to research from The Post, officers killed 1,096 people in 2022. This is the most The Post has seen since it started tracking U.S. police shooting deaths in 2015. There were only 15 days last year without a fatal police shooting. Experts can't pinpoint a single cause for why this keeps happening. Some blame a rise in gun purchases. Others point to the slow pace of reform and use of force policies and the challenge of holding officers accountable. Number five, prosecutors have downgraded charges against Alec Baldwin. The actor and the armorer on the set, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, were charged last month in the fatal 2021 shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The two are still charged with involuntary manslaughter, but prosecutors reduced a second charge. This could significantly lessen possible jail time. A wild week of extreme weather lies ahead for the U.S. That's story number six. Record cold will be felt across the West, but it'll be unusually warm in the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. Temperatures there could hit the 80s to near 90s. If you're wondering how this is happening, a jet stream is pulling cold air from Canada and slicing through the country right now. This is cooling the air over the West and bringing warmth to the East. And at number seven, a man has been cured of HIV after a bone marrow transplant. Scientists confirmed that the man in Germany was declared free of the virus after receiving HIV-resistant stem cells through a transplant. This type of treatment was originally intended to treat his leukemia. According to new research published yesterday, the man was monitored for more than nine years after his transplant in 2013. This new finding gives us further evidence that HIV is not entirely incurable. It also offers hope for the future that those with HIV won't need daily treatment. And just like that, you are all caught up. If you like today's show, leave us a review on Apple or you can rate us on Spotify. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I'll meet you back here tomorrow.